Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's update video. And the uh, first thing we're going to look at here is Tristan's man monstrosity, this absolutely enormous system for dealing with uh, Holmium. And we had a bit of a look at this last week, but he's actually finished it now, so there's, uh, there's a little bit more to talk about. And it all starts somewhere up here, where eventually we'll find a train will pull into this station here just like this and then unload all of the uh, all of the all the core fragments into the station here and because of the well because, <laughs> because the system has been set up on such a scale um, the, there's absolutely no way these trains are capable of keeping these um, the, these warehouses full as you can see this is now draining out very very quickly and um, almost before the time before I finish the sentence it's going to have dumped it all back out onto these belts uh, so yeah, he's going to need a lot more trains to be coming in here to be able to keep up with this system. So it might be ever so slightly overbuilt. But then that all flows down here. We've got a large chunk of it on the on, on the belt over here. And eventually it'll go down into these pulverising machines, which, as you've seen before, then turn it into the uh, core, core fragments, the stone, and the actual holmonite that he wants for the for, for later purposes. Um, the core chunks appear to be going downwards, the stone upwards, and the, uh, the holmium upwards. So, yeah, that all goes off to in, in the way you'd expect. Fortunately, this is then getting fed through into this this uh, system here, which is um, is balancing it across between the four belts coming out, and then those are being balanced between the sides of the belt as well to make sure there's always plenty of uh, of, of holmium going through. I say plenty going through; that isn't quite the case because um, <laughs> there's a bit of a, this, this 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 belt in particular and this one have now emptied a little bit. So yes, that will then also be topped up by uh, by the holmium that's coming in from this station here. So he's got another train that's dropping it off. These are doing slightly better at staying full, although that said, this is now down to almost most none so we're going to run out there soon as well and the mine hasn't dug up anymore yet but anyway this keeps a nice steady supply of it coming in over here um, ideally mostly from the uh, from crushing the core fragments but with a little bit of a top up from there this is now running very very slowly and I believe this is because there's shortages of other things so as you can see here there's um there's not as many of the uh, of the anion beads as we, as we would like coming coming down here to go into the into the next step of the processing. So even though lots and lots of them get recycled, as you'll see when some of them pour out here like that, even though we're recycling a load of them, we still need an enormous quantity of them, and the rate they're being produced at the moment is not sufficient. Now Tristan's notes say that he's a bit short of cryonite, and that's why there's not as much of this as he would like. Um, it's very, very short crown. I can't see any coming in anywhere. I assume it's meant to be coming in on the other side of this belt. Yes, down here. So we've got plastic and, in theory, cryonite coming in here, but there's apparently a bit of a shortage of it. As I, as I mentioned yesterday, Tristan has boosted the cryonite production out on Drakit ever so slightly, but it's not remotely enough to keep up with the sheer demands of this Holm Holmium factory. So, whenever any does come in, though, it's converted over into the anion beads. They come down the belt over here, in, into here, and we're processing this as as much as is reasonably possible. So we've got, we've then got the holmium chloride coming out here, going down here, process, 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 and then over in, into the into the furnaces which produce the molten and then turn it into ingots. Now making the molten stuff also requires uh, pyroflux. So that's coming in here, and that's being generated up here. So every so often there's a, a stream of um, uh, vulcanite will be dropped in into a uh, into a delivery cannon chest somewhere. Uh, maybe it's this one. I'm not certain. Um, <laughs> but he gets dropped in some. Oh, probably this this one actually. Yes, because he's got a, a small a small facility here making a little bit of vulcanite for the original deployment builder he had, and then a lot more of it then just pours off down here like this down here flows all the way through here as you can see there's there's another delivery cannon capsules worth of it and another one and so on and that all comes down here and is being made into pyroflux and now one thing he's done which is quite interesting and is, is something that apparently he's done it for throughput and i'll talk about that in a second is he's got each of these tanks will fill up to a certain point which i believe is 50,000. yes there we go so when this tank gets up to 50,000, the pump will run and we'll push it onto the next tank and when this one fills up to 50,000, the pump will run push it onto the next tank and so on and so on all the way down the line and there's a bit of an offset here, but never mind. Let's not worry about that. I've done far worse, and so I therefore can't be too critical. So yeah, they, these have all got about almost 50 in them because they stop when they get below 50. So we get we get down and down and down and down. And eventually, we get to this one, which only has 27. So at the moment, there's only enough pyroflux being produced to satisfy this many machines. I say to satisfy this many machines because most of them don't ha in a slightly way like that because most of these don't actually have any input going into them because of the aforementioned shortages at the other end. So we are actually 
filling up all of these tanks to the point where they, they're going to be full. Um, but if he ever does sort out the input problem over here, we'll very, very quickly process all of this through all of these machines and then ha probably have a massive shortage of Vulcanite for the next step. So in the future, we're probably going to have to expand and expand and expand and expand if we need more Holmium than we're getting at the moment. But at the moment, the system is more than capable of dealing with all of the uh, Holmium chloride that's coming through from here, powdering it up, and passing it over to here, where eventually it'll find a machine. The machine will go, okay, I'll have that. It'll grab it all up, and eventually that'll be turned into these uh, these ingots that are coming out here, that are then be flowing around, 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 around. So Tristan has also said we're now limited by lack of demand, and that's that's sort of true, but sort of not, because you'll see that this belt is flowing merrily along here. There's there's no, it's not backing up along here at all, so the demand is absolutely fine here. However, if we do fl run along here to the end, we can see that actually the belt is starting to um, starting to build back up along here, and if we go far enough along it, we can see it up all the way up here we are actually starting to thoroughly back up completely and there isn't enough and, and there isn't enough demand on these cannons to keep the keep thing completely satisfied and that's fine that's a good thing because it means we're starting to build up a bit of a buffer of it and so We've got that buffer available for when we start doing um, energy science a bit more intensively, and when I, when we build up and start so, and start trying to use more holmium. And there are other things to use holmium for as well. So if we look up holmium, uh, well, ing ingots just get turned into plates, I suspect. Uh, yes, just turned into plates. But plates can be turned into efficiency modules, data for science, data uh, science, holmium cables, and holmium cables go into lots of the advanced electronics-y things. Uh, they need uh, like flat solar panels, we need Tesla ammo, Tesla guns, and the, as you can see there's lots and lots of things that are going to be using the holmium later on in the game, especially by via holmium cables. So we're going to have a much much higher demand later, so building up a bit of a buffer now would be would be would be nice. So that's what that's what's happening at the moment. We're building up a buffer on the belts. Uh, we could potentially put in a warehouse here. It's probably not necessary because at the point where we suddenly start using significantly more holmium, we're going to want to think about actually producing it a bit more quickly as well. And that's going to mean producing the cryonite more quickly and probably shipping the vulcanite over here a bit more quickly as well. Let's have a look at the, um, the, the, the how much holmium has been made and have a, have a look at the other uh, graph. So if we look at holmi um, ingots. That's this one. Over the last ten hours, yeah, you, you can see that we've got. He's gone from the the previous rate that was going between somewhere between about fourteen ish per minute and maybe down to eight per minute, um, and now he's got that bumped up to twenty per minute. So it's more. It's running well, three times as fast as it was here. Maybe well, two and a half times as fast, and maybe a little bit faster than it was here. But we did get this crazy, crazy spike up here. And this is so this is down to all of the sort of the other inputs being being the problems at the moment. So in the future we'll probably I'm sure we'll find that we'll get we'll manage to churn through a lot more of this. We'll get it running a bit we'll get it running we can get everything running a bit faster once we've got a bit more input. But I think that's probably going to be gated behind spaceships and being able to move things around a bit more efficiently and effectively. So until then we're we're probably get, we're I think we're probably producing enough holmium here. We've got a backlog from this. I think that's going to be okay. I don't think there's a great deal else to say about this. I mean, he's, he's done some expansion out up here, so he's got lots and lots of these machines making the um, making making the the hydrogen chloride. So all of the sand is pouring in along here, along this blue, along this belt, and coming out of this uh, delivery cannon chest over here, which I am now apparently shipping to, or somebody is shipping to anyway. So we've got all the all the sand coming in here, being passed out along this belt to be to be processed over here into into the uh, into the hydrogen chloride. We've got a good supply of the anion beads potentially here, but as 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 stated before, we've got a bit of a shortage of the um, the inputs, specifically the, uh, the 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 cryonite down here, and it looks like we're also quite short of this fluid, which appears to be yeah nitric acid. That appears to be a bit low as well, so maybe a little bit more expansion on that would be, be a good idea. Although having said that, there's some tanks down here they've got quite a lot of um, acid in them. Uh, how is this even working? Why is why is that linked over to this? Oh no, there is there is. I couldn't see that pipe down there because apparently I'm blind. So yeah, we've got feeding the nitric acid out of here. I don't know why that's a bit slow. Um, oh, oh right, because this tank is full, but it's not being pumped through, because this is only pumping through when there's more than 100,000 in there. That seems weird, but I'm sure he has his reasons. Oh, it's probably to keep these running. So yeah, so these, these machines are the priority, and then when we get enough overflow in here, then it'll run these ones as well. So perhaps more nitric acid production would be a good idea if we want to speed this up. But that said, there's so many other things that are causing bottlenecks that that's probably not a huge, a huge worry. We are... Um, we're currently, as I say, bottleneck, mostly bottlenecked by the uh, the cryonites coming in here, although a also a little bit by the by the nitric acid. Uh, so yes, we've got loads and loads of stuff going on there. Lots and lots of um, holmium available that can be shipped out as and when we need it. Uh, it's massively underutilized at the moment, but I'm sure in the future, as I say, we'll be using a lot more of it.
So speaking of exotic resources, let's now go off and have a little bit of a look at Kothar because Mike has been very, very busy over here. Um, this is not the part of Kothar I wanted to look at. Goodness knows why my camera is over there. So, uh, right, what has Mike been doing? Uh, he says with, with, with tones of trepidation in his voice. So he says he's put in a... He, he's, as you remember last time, we looked at his where did it, up here. We looked at this um, iridium processing. So we're dropping off the uh, the core chunks being dumped out here, being passed onto the belt, crushed down over here, um, brought round, and then we're flowing it through this this again somewhat overbuilt system that's bringing in all of the, that's bringing in the iridite from the core chunk processing, crushing it, pulverizing it here, doing the next step here um, to turn it into goodness knows what. Um, these all appear to be cation beads. I'm sure there's something more useful being produced here somewhere. Um, yeah, when any comes in, we're getting... Yes, there we go. We're getting the powder coming out... The emosite powder coming out over here. Brought up here where it's cooked along with in, with the um, enriched pyroflux. No, enriched vulcanite into the blast cake. Blast cake gets passed over here. Cooked in the um, in, in the furnaces into uh, in, in the iridium ingots. And those are then passed off down here and going into a warehouse. Great. So, in order to make this run a little bit faster, in the same way that Tristan had the uh, system where he was bringing in a certain number of the core fragments and then also bringing in the um, bringing in ore as well, uh, he's also got then another station somewhere that's ready to just dump the uh, iridium. Here we go. This station here is ready to take in iridium uh, iridite rather from from, a, from an iridite mine and dump it straight into the uh, processing system here, so we can get this whole system running. A lot faster, running, uh, utilizing basically using all of the machines here rather than just ticking over at the rate it's currently going at. And so, uh, yes, this is, this is great. This is going to work very nicely uh, we, with an iridite mine, such as, well, there's a patch down here. Um, but unfortunately, Mike got as far as, he, well, he set up a couple of stone mine, a stone mine and an iron mine. Oh, and a coal mine over there. And he was going to put in an iridite mine. I'm not sure which one. It might might have been this one. And then he discovered that actually, put in order to mine up iridite, you require, as you can see over there on the right, you need a big mining drill. So if we look at, uh, if we can find a patch of something else like copper over here, um, it doesn't specify what you have what you have to what you have to use here. So for example, I could use an electric mining drill Mark Three. I could use a Mark Two Mark One. Could even use a burner mining drill there if I wanted to. Whereas over on the iridium ones, it absolutely has to be. Oh, apparently it could be an electric mining drill three as well. But it has to be a big mining drill of some of some description. So maybe the, maybe the Mark 3s are big as well. I haven't really looked at those yet. So uh, Mike was out here with a load of the uh, the mining drill Mark 2s, which we've been using everywhere else. The, these things. And he discovered that they don't work with um, Iridium. So he was he had a bit of a sad from that. And is um, presumably is now going to be importing some uh, large area mining drills over from Norvis. So he can actually get this up and, and built and running. So he can dump a bit more in. Uh, and that, yeah, as I say, um, it made him a bit sad. So, ah. So he abandoned that plan a little bit and then moved on to doing some imosite uh, digging up because he's got some pa some patches of imosite in his uh, in his area of um, control. So he's dropped in some of these quarry drills that pull up the pull the imosite up out of the ground. And uh, this is the weird purple stuff uh, that's then being passed down here. We've got a we've got a train over here that is then taking it over to an, there's there's an imosite drop somewhere down here. So it gets dropped off here, passed up, and in like like we've been doing on other planets, that's being passed then over into a delivery cannon to ship it off to uh, Taishakuten, as you can see here, um, where it's then being dropped. This is another another of the um, another of the outposts that's digging up the um, digging up Imosite. So a load of it falls in like that, drops it into the delivery cannon chest here, so we can then process it. But I talked about that quite a bit yesterday. Um, but as but as you can see, that's one of the places where it's coming from. So that's that's working nicely. It's another place where we're bringing in imosite. Um, so that's 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 very very useful. We need we need imosite in fairly significant quantities. And this is yeah, this is set up to watch for imosite being less than zero. If we go and have a look on Agnea we see that the Immersite cannon over here is watching for the Immersite to be less than 900. And that's the prioritization thing I was talking about yesterday. And I didn't show you then, which I probably should have done because I was talking about it then. Um, but I've shown you now, so I hope you're happy. <laughs> uh, let's go back over to Kothar. All right, so that's, yes, that's Immersite that's being shipped over here from here. Um, he has described it as a uh, Immersite shooty gun of doom, which seems reasonable, except it's being carefully controlled to try and minimize the, the levels of doom created. Another thing he decided was to try and give himself a little bit more space to play with. So I think he felt that um, his wall was originally over here, and he, I reckon he—I guess he felt that this was sort of his imosite processing was taking up most of the space over here. He squeezed it all in a little bit. Um, okay, there's a bit of room for expansion over here, and but there's not a huge amount. So he started having a bit of a play with the nuclear artillery. You can see the scorch marks from it all the way over here. Uh, that's taken out all of the um, the biter nests. He's left a few worms in because he's um, not a completionist apparently, but he's got. 
rid of all the nests and that means it's the area is now safe the uh, the biters aren't going to be able to expand in this area because they can't expand from worms the worms will just sit there and spit at anybody who gets near them um, but if you have any nests like this these can spawn um, biters the biters can wander off and they can create new nests new worms and generally go over and chew on things so yes he's um he's made this area safe from uh, safe from biters and nests anyway if not worms and then he spent a while for pushing the wall from here over to here which i think was a bit of a faff and a bit of a headache but he's managed to get it get, get it done and get the wall built or, built now so he's now claimed a slightly larger area of the planet now i do note that he hasn't actually claimed any more core seams with this so there's uh, or uh, he's actually he's got a couple of Im iridite patches so there's um there's 27 million there and then a few smaller ones scattered around so i guess that's going to be potentially useful um but he didn't claim the he didn't claim the crude oil up here although he's got plenty already he didn't claim the, the uh, core seam he didn't claim we didn't claim any more core seams possibly because he's he set up he set up outposts right on the edge of the planet and as we've seen from other planets, if we go off and have a look at... Um, Taishakutan is a good example of this. If we zoom all the way out, that's a bit too far out, you can see that the uh, the core patches tend to be clustered a little bit more in the middle of the planet, and then not so many out around the edge. And I think... Uh, well, planetoid, this is a moon, but, but you know, you get the idea. And I think if we go and perhaps if we look at... What's another good one to look at? Agnea, I haven't... Have I expanded out far enough on Agnea? Not really. I haven't found I haven't found the edge. This I don't think. This is just... This is, no, this is just the scan, I think. Um, but yeah, basically, you'll, you'll, you can sort of tell here the um, the core the, the core seams tend to be a little bit more denser in, in the middle of the planet, and they're not so, there aren't so many of them further out. So this means that he's he's unfortunately in a place where the core seams are rather um, rather rare. So he has in effect sort of set up camp in this area where as you can see on this planet there's only one seam now there's a couple more outside so you could go and get those but it's not giving him an enormous amount of um uh, of uh of, of core seams to go out go out and mine from which is going to make that going to make these things a little bit tricky but to be honest because with all of these systems you get so much um you get so little so few ingots out for each uh, core fragment you process you get quite a lot of spare um delivery cannon capsules that you can use to ship those core fragments out even even if you're even if most even if most of your iridium processing is coming from iridium ore so he's probably actually going to be all right especially he's then also got the uh, the mark special design here where you have a delivery cannon chest that can bring in all of the additional ingredients that you require for making your delivery cannons so they don't actually all have to come from the core fragments at all so so it's not entirely necessary but you know it, uh, he, he's not going to be able to do quite as much uh, core fragment digging up as we would otherwise um, hope he is also still having to bring in the um, the mineral water by a delivery cannon which is absolutely horrible but never mind so yes big expansions over here much larger area taken over with the help of the nuclear artillery and lots and lots of uh, grumbling and, and, and complaining uh, he did also manage to get his, his, his face eaten off by a biter so um, well done there and to add insult to injury he also managed to hit respawn on Nor Norvis so presumably he then had to fly over by rocket again um, and still didn't bring any large area mining drills over, so um, or at least as far as I'm aware, he didn't. Maybe, maybe he's got some more in his um, in his boxes of doom over here. I don't see any, but this is such a sort of let's put all the things in different boxes that I can't really tell. Um, maybe he's got maybe he's got some maybe maybe he brought some big area mining large area mining drills over. I'm not sure, or maybe he came over in a hurry because he didn't want his body to despawn. So in the last episode, while we're thinking about um, iridium, I um, had a look at the amount of the quantity of the various resources that were being that were being made, and I was because I I looked at um, Mike's design over here and went, well, there's all of these machines, all this all this going on over here, and there's not actually all that mu all that many iridium ingots coming out of the bottom here, and I think, uh, and I then went in and looked at the actual numbers and found I was actually being a bit. Um, uh, harsh to, on him because the iridium was actually being produced faster than any of the other um, exotic metal resources. Uh, I think probably part of the reason is because he's got four red belts feeding out here, whereas Tristan had one yellow belt and I had I think one red belt feeding from uh, free, feeding the beryllium out. So it looked like there was a crazy, there was almost nothing being produced, but it actually wasn't quite so bad. So let's have another look at the ingots because we know Tristan's done some upgrades. I haven't. Um, but it's interesting to see see how things are going. So we won't look at copper or iron or steel because those are uh, those are a bit silly and, and and we're producing those in much much larger quantities. But we will take a look at the holmium, the iridium, and the beryllium down here. Um, and we can see uh, that well the yeah, yeah so actually the the iridium production has picked up quite a bit. Uh, 
probably entirely because of this enormous spike here. If we look over the last hour instead of the last 10 hours, um, <laughs> that brings it down a little bit. And we'll see that, yeah, we can see that well, the, the beryllium actually is, is by far the slowest. That's being produced at 7.6 per minute. The iridium is up at 11. And Tristan's um, hard work has now brought the holmium up to a whole 35 per minute. Now, if we look at the steady... St I was going to say if we look at the steady states here, but we can't do that with the iridium because, it, because it's got, got these up uppy downy spikes whenever a train comes in. Um, but we've got... Yeah, we've got a good... We've got a good supply of holmium coming through about 40 per minute. The iridium is bouncing between um, 5 and 20. Uh, 5 and... Yeah, five, 5 and 30, sorry, so it's going up and down there. And the beryllium is down to about 7. So, yeah, we've got we've got a steady supply of all of those exotic materials coming through. Um, I'd add in the vulcanite as well, but I'm not really sure how to... Um, how to compare because the vulcanite i feel like the vulcanite is is produced in a i think these blocks are a bit easier to produce than ingots are so I mean, if we get rid of that you can see that all of these are ridiculously low compared to the sheer quantity of vulcanite we're pumping out um so it's not an entirely fair comparison it's a bit like adding in the um i can't spell it's a bit like adding in the uh steel ingots and the uh, copper and iron ingots as well. They're just the the copper ingots are being produced at such a rate compared to absolutely everything else uh, that it's just it makes all of the others the, the comparisons are somewhat meaningless. We can, um, but then that we're using the copper at a much higher rate as well. So, so yeah, I'd say basically what I'm what I'm trying to say is that despite the fact that this looks like a very very slow trickle of um, iridium coming through, it's actually a fairly significant amount. And especially as we're not actually using it yet, we've managed to stockpile seven and a half thousand of it. And once Mike gets his large area mining drills and can start dumping raw iridium ore straight into the um, into the system over here, we're, uh, up over here, we're going to get loads of it coming through. We're going to we'll probably have a, a plentiful supply of it, and then he's going to have the same problem that Tristan was having earlier with um, not being able to bring it into the processing machines fast enough. <laughs> um, I guess at some point I'm going to need to head back over to Talos and come in and, and basically, as I've, I've been saying a few times, just increase the production systems over here. So this all was built before we'd, before we'd really started using beacons. So this, this whole area is running pathetically slowly. And, and essentially I need to come out here with lots and lots of uh, productivity modules, various beacons and speed modules, speed the whole thing up, probably build another one and go out and get some more, more uh, drill patches as well. Because this is just... It's a bit, it's a bit slow and feeble at the moment, to be quite honest with you. It should all, it all needs to run a lot faster than this, um, and then eventually we'll get a nice steady supply of it coming through. Because look, we've only got three thousand. That's, 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 that's not very much. Um, and I do plan to start doing astro science relatively soon because I want spaceships. So that's going to be, that's going to put a big load on the beryllium production. So we're going to need to start. We're going to need to do something about this and just get it going a bit faster and a bit better. Um, yeah, you see, there's only one red belt coming out here, but it actually doesn't have anything on it at all. We have three of these, um, what do you call them, it's running. Uh, this one hasn't got enough of the uh, molten beryllium in it yet, so the, three, the four is absolutely plenty. And yeah, we're just kind of waiting because all of these productivity modules make these into very, very slow machines. So, some point in the distant future, we'll actually have some beryllium. Um, but at the moment, I'm not worrying about it too much because I just don't really need any at the moment. Okay, so I did mention back in the uh, back when we were looking at Kothar uh, that um, Mike had managed to blow, him, uh, managed to get himself taken out by a biter. So yes, well done there. That brings us on to the uh, the death counters. So Mike has uh, uh, get, gotten himself an additional one in there, and um, Mark had a little bit of um, unfortunateness out on Bridget when he was um, doing some clearing out of biters. So presumably pushing back his walls over here was one of the deaths. Was there. Oh, one down there, one up there. Those are probably oh no one. So no, take it back. One there and one there. Those are probably the new two. So while he was pushing out and expanding out this way. He managed to get his face eaten, so that's a little bit tragic. But um, you know, it's it, it comes with the uh, territory expansion, I suppose. Uh, that brings out the, the total up to Mark. Mike has an astounding 42, putting him well in the lead. It brings Mark up to 14. I'm still on five, and Tristan is still on one. So we clearly need to clearly need to try and kill Tristan a bit more often. Um, I still I stand by one of my deaths being uh, Mark's fault because he didn't do the the uh, defences on uh, Norvis well enough. But uh, we'll we'll let him off for that, I suppose. He has done a lot of clearing out around here, though, so it looks like in the next uh, episode uh, or the next next stream, he's probably get, potentially going to put in a wall there and there and there and there and there and there, and that'll allow him to claim another one, two, three, four, five, six core mine seams and get a lot more uh, and get a lot more vitamin lines flowing in over here. Not that we really need it at the moment, but we're going to need massive quantities of vitamin lines later, at least if um, if my 0.5 run was anything to go by. Uh, 
Either that or he's just going to carry on with the combat and try and f free up the entire planetoid. Who knows? <laughs> we shall find out in the next stream. So I hope, speaking of the next stream, I hope you'll come along and join me for that. That'll be uh, now on Monday at 7.30pm UK time as usual with the four of us um, carrying on with everything that's going on here. So Mike is going to get some large area mining drills I expect. Mark is going to presumably carry on with his uh, territory expansion over here. Uh, Tristan's going to, I don't know, f maybe he's going to fiddle with the Holmium, the, no, the, yes, the Holmium some more. Maybe he's going to carry on helping me with uh, stuff in, sp in the space station we shall see uh, and I'm going to carry on trying to do get get some get some more sciences up and running in the uh, in, on the space station and uh, not just dealing with uh, recycled nonsense forever so yes there is always lots to do on this in this uh, in this playthrough so lots and lots of building lots and lots of expanding lots and lots to do so come along it'll be a fun stream lots to see there and on Wednesday I shall be playing some more XCOM things are going quite well there everybody's getting slaughtered but it is XCOM so come along throw your name in the hat as well and uh, and um do your bit for for the for, for the uh, your your planet of origin, and what else is going to happen? Well, well, I'm sure we'll get another GTA video on Thursday, and hopefully a, a Factorio or something else video on Tuesday. So there's always lots going on, on the channel. Please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of it, and check out our our sponsor Treefall.be. They um they host Minecraft and uh, Factorio and various other game servers. And if you go along there and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get twenty percent off your first month. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next. Bye-bye.